Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. You know who I am, and I have with me a triumphant after his last performance, Dave the White Rhino Allen. Dave, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm good, evening, thank you. Yeah, it's first after uh, last night. Um, uh, it's, good. it's, it's good. It's uh, good. You've actually had a fight. Yeah, I know. You sound, you sound surprised. And yeah, not only, not only you've had a fight, but there's some video footage of you fighting. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I made sure someone uh, someone caught um, caught caught a bit of the fight and uh, you know people have been uh, able to to catch a glimpse of me for the first time not the whole fight I don't want to give too much away but um, you know yeah I'm glad people have finally got to to see a little bit of myself. It was quite it was quite an interesting little fight there yourself and the the, the uh, gentleman what was his name again I could never pronounce his name. Um, Gingerick Vilecki. Gingerick Ginger Ginger. Gingerick Vilecki. Gingerick Vilecki. We'll just say Mr. Vilecki, we'll say. Yeah. So um, you talked about how you were untouchable and you said that you uh, had the best chin in boxing. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's good to know. It's good to know you, you're confident. And that last fight was nice to see. You're doing some nice things. You look, it, seemed, it seemed to me like you were just going through, uh, going through the motions, popping the jab out, sticking it, trying a few different things. What was going through in your mind? Yeah, it was just nice. It was nice to be back in the ring. Obviously, 15 months is a long time out, and I'm, I'm not the most experienced fighter in the world anyway, so it was a bit um, nervous uh, being there. You know, I had, I had a good uh, I had a good size advantage over my opponent. Yeah. You know, the plan was to go in. You know, it was only a four-round fight, but the first round, I just went in and um, you know, just took my time, had a look at him, and as soon as I hit him, I knew how tough he was. I knew he was as tough as his record suggested. Yeah. Uh, like I say, he's only been stopped once by punches. Obviously, he's been stopped on cuts before. Yep. As soon as I hit him, I knew he was very tough. Um, so the first and second rounds, it was just about softening him up. Yeah. Um, and then in the third round, you know, I, I said, I said to the to to my manager in the corner, I said, I said, I'll, I'm going to go and stop him now. I said, we had, we had a little bit of a laugh in the corner. I said, listen, I'm, I'm going to stop him now. So I went out and uh, put some punches together, uh, and I, and I knew as soon as I put put my punches together and, and let six or seven go, it was over and, and that's what happened really. But it was a very tough man. You know, he's very durable and um you know, I was really happy to get him out of there. If I wouldn't have got him out of there, I'd have been disappointed, but you know, I'm I'm really happy that I did. What do you learn from a fight like this? I mean, you know, I know you're what, eight and oh now? Yeah, I've had eight fights, seven wins in the in the draw. So what do you learn from this fight then? For the first time last night, you know, I was really comfortable in there. I was really comfortable in that. You know, things are starting to slow down. I'm getting more experience now. You know, yep. the sparring that I've had with Klitschko, you know, that that was like I said, that was worth three fights in terms of in terms of atmosphere and, and in terms of, you know, handling pressure. I'm really starting it's starting to feel like a spar when I'm going in there. It feel, fights are starting to feel more like spars. Right. Less pressure, less nervous energy. Uh, and last night, you know in the third round, you know, it felt like it felt like I'd just got in there, I was fresh, I was really fresh, and, um, you know, that's the main thing, just experience, the whole the whole ordeal, I call it an ordeal, you know, mm -hmm. getting weighed in and, and fighting and stuff, you know, that's, I'm, I'm just getting a lot better at handling the, the whole occasion now. So what, how many people were in the, it looked quite a big, big place you were in last night. Yeah, it's Doncaster Dome. It's, um, so how, how, how much does that hold? I think it holds around 1,100 people, I think. Uh, Jim okay. and old Stewie Hall was held there for the European title. Right. Um, you know, there was eight fights on, and, uh, you know, each fighter brought a lot of support. Right. And I went on first. Why? We wanted it to be at the busiest. Everyone was told I was I would be on first at 7.30, uh, everyone to get there, and the place was packed. Um, and, you know, I got a good reception, and, um, you know, a, a, lot, a, a lot of people come up to me afterwards and said they, they really enjoyed it, was impressed. Were you surprised at the amount of people that supported you, or would, is that what you expected? Um, I, I knew I knew my performance, you know, would uh, would open, would make people sit up and uh, and watch, and hopefully they can come again uh, to my next fight after seeing my performance in this one. 
Great, great, great. Did anyone talk about the interviews you've done apart from those people on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. People, people like my interviews. I think people, people say uh, I'm a character, you know, and um, you know they like to listen, listen to my opinion, listen to me talk. I'm not sure why. There's a lot of people who don't like it as well. I'm sure, <laughs> but. Um, you know, while I'm winning, I'm just going to have to put up with it, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> but you know what, Dave? I enjoy it. I love listening to you talk. I think you've got such a... Such a I don't want the word... It, um, kind of sense of humour. It's very... Um, something's pretty sharp. And sometimes it's, it's in the tone of your voice. Yeah. Like, sometimes I talk to you like... Dave's on one tonight. Dave's on one tonight. So, <laughs> just sit back and just watch. Now, did you, have you had any of this, has this any of this sort of dry humour come from being around the Furies by any chance? Or is that something that's just given you more encouragement to just be who you are? No, I've always, I've always been a weird character. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've always been different. I've always been different. And, uh, you know, obviously, the, hopefully if I, if I get to the, to the stage of my career I want to get, you know, I think, I think I'm, I think I'm one of them characters who can, uh, you know, can be even more successful due due to due to my personality. So you know, we're just gonna let the fighting do the talking for now, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I can be, uh, you know, I can I can really cross over, you know, one day if uh, you know if I keep doing if I keep winning in the ring. Certainly, your your mental state seems to have changed because I remember talking to you 15 months ago, you know, and there was some there was some dark 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 moments. When we were talking, it's like, I don't know, if, I don't know if I'm going to get through this, you know. Here you are now talking about the next fight being something that's going to be more substantial for you. Yeah, there's been some dark times in that 15 months. There's been some, um, you know, some very bad times, some really bad times. And because um, to be honest, I didn't think I'd ever box again. Um, you know, when I was reached, when I was edging towards 21, 22 stone, you know, um, you know, watching watching time pass by, you know, I, I weren't sure if I was ever going to box again, you know, so I did fall out of love, I did fall out of love with it for a little while as well, you know, being out of shape, um, and just missing opportunities, seeing other fighters have opportunities, and, um, so I never, I actually never thought I would box again, you know, only, only until about 10, 12 weeks ago, I, uh, I thought I'm actually going to box again for real, you know, and last night it was just, you know, it was only a four-round fight in uh, Doncaster Dome, you know, in front of like a thousand people, but, you know, it's, um, it's really spurred me on, you know, I'll be back training tomorrow. Um, I had a KFC last night, but I've not gone mad today. And, um, you know, I'm really, uh, you know, I'm really happy with life, never mind boxing, you know, and that's, you know, that's, that's unusual for me. So it's good, I'll take it. I'm, uh, for me, I'm, I'm really inspired because I've, there's so many people I've spoken to and interviewed and there seems to be a common thread where they go through this patch of things just not going right. Anything that could, could go wrong, goes wrong yeah. and then they get through that patch it's almost like a like a if you can get through this period of dark dark time i'm going to bring you to a place where it's going to be really good and i'm seeing that for everybody i've spoken to i mean there's another look look at tyson fury it is a good example here a man that had flight counsel on him with david hay twice then he had the obviously the incident with his family you know so that was a really torrid time and now he's round the corner from fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, t time sort of, time time heals everything. Time sorts everything, and uh, you know, in, in being completely honest, you know, I was I was the architect of uh, some of my own downfalls. You know, from right. being young, uh, yep. patient, and uh, you know, just just making fool not foolish mistakes, but you know, just you know, if I could go back in time, you know, there'd be a lot of things I'd change, but I wouldn't change where I am today. Um, and you know, I'm 23 years old now, and. Um, you know, I found him. You know, I might be starting to grow up a little bit, only a little bit, think, but I'm I'm starting starting. But don't you think that time out has probably saved you from being in a place that you probably didn't want to be? Yeah, yeah. You know, and after I beat Larry last year, you know, I was seven fights unbeaten, just turned 22, and um, you know, I weren't I weren't ready for big fights then. Um, you know, I was very much still a child. Um, you know, as a heavyweight being 22, that's young in the division anyway. But uh, yeah. mentally speaking, you know, very young. And, um, you know, this last year, like I said, I've not boxed, but I've been all over the world uh, on my own, travel, travelled all over Europe on my own and, you know, developed as a person. And, you know, that it's, it's starting it's to help in the ring as well, you know. And, um, 
you know, it's exciting times, you know, my manager, I know he's dead excited, you know, I know certain family members, you know, that are involved in the, in my boxing, you know, we're really excited because, you know, I've, I'm ranked 10 in Britain, straight back number 10 in Britain, and, um, you know, it's, it's, there's only two, two or three fights away, and, and and it's and it's you know it's something something really big's gonna happen, and um, you know that's good, that's exciting. Did they need a Doncaster Press turn up last night to see you fight? Yeah, yeah, the Doncaster Press there. You know, the certain local papers I seem to be in there quite a lot. You know, my, my good. My, my nana Betty loves that. You know, she always gets it and calls me and and reads it out to me. Uh, so you know, yeah, you know the people at Doncaster. Hopefully, you know they can get behind me and support me in the. At the next show at the Doncaster Dome, and um, hopefully I can keep putting in some decent performances. I hope. Do you know there's one question that I've never asked you that I should ask you that I've never asked you that I'm gonna ask you? Who's your trainer? Um. Well, for this fight, you know, it's a, it's a for this fight, I had like eight weeks, and um, yeah. So Monday to Thursday, I would go for a run in the morning and train myself in the living room. Uh, in the evening, uh, Friday night, I do the pads with my father down in uh, gym. We, he likes to have a drink on a Friday night, so them pad sessions are interesting when he comes to the gym. And he's a little bit worse for wear. You know, we have some interesting pad sessions on Friday <laughs> night. But you know, he, my my dad was an ex pro. You know, he, he beat Harold Bomber Graham uh, as an amateur in the ABAs. Wow. Uh, you know, he lost to Colin Jones three years running in the juniors and the senior ABAs. You know, so he was just a good fighter himself. Yeah, he's very knowledgeable. He's a crazy man. He's a crazy, crazy man. But you know, he knows what he's, he knows what he's doing. So we have to keep him. We have to keep him around the team. Uh, right. So Friday and Saturday with him, and uh, you know, for this fight, I've, I've done two sessions there, and, and the rest I've just done with myself. I've just ran and um, just just a lot of shadow boxing and a, a lot of floor exercises in my living room. So that. But but I mean, you'd be your your own worst critic. I mean, you you'd be there and you'd look at yourself and think, well, this guy's going to need some sort of serious trainer beside him. I mean, isn't that something that you look at or something that you look? I mean, to, in terms of going on to, you know, from the British to the world honours, isn't that something you think that you should be having now ingrained in you? Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I mean, for all my for all my career um, as a professional, even as an amateur, you know. Um, kind of trained myself the whole time or not trained at all um yeah i mean you had peter fury at one point yeah, with you didn't I had you peter for, for eight weeks um, yeah and apart from that you know i've kind of every coach that i've had has always been like just turn up to the fight and we'll be all right uh especially as an amateur you know i won i won a national title and and whatever else without really training and, and just going to the gym twice a week to my amateur gym and just and just getting by in and stuff um, so yeah, it's definitely something that that needs to be sorted out. Um, you know, my manager has got a gym, and and for the next fight, you know, I'm looking to um, you know to really knuckle down, and you know, if it's a ten round fight, I'm going to need to. So, so is, is that a call out for a trainer, or is that you've got some ideas of who you want as a trainer? I've got some ideas. Yeah, you know, it's um, you know, it's all there. I believe it's all there. It's just. Um, but are you coachable, Dave? I'm coachable, yeah. Barely. And the re there's a reason why I asked that, because obviously you've done it all by yourself for so long, but you yourself know and acknowledge that you need that. But are you ready to... I know it's one thing saying it, but it's another thing actually having to sit and say, Oi, get your ass in gym now. You're going to do this now. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, I'm one of them characters. I'm very... Um, you know, it's not that I think I know better than anyone else because I'm aware that there's a lot of people out there that are far more knowledgeable than I am. Um, yeah. But I always say that I know myself better than anyone else. Um, so, you know, it's finding that right balance. But I believe I'm 100% fit. I've sparred and um, I've trained and I'm going to be a handful for anybody. Um, because I've been getting in the ring for the last... Well, for I've had 18 fights now, amateur and pro. Uh, and I've only lost once to... To a two-time ABA champion in my ninth fight, so um, you know I've done all right, but I, I believe that I'm only shown 20 to 30 percent of what I can do. So you know, yeah, when, I, when when we get everything sorted, you know, we're gonna be we're gonna be there. And that's you looking at yourself, saying you've got 20 to 30 percent of yourself. Imagine what a trainer, a really experienced trainer, could do for you. He probably said you only got five percent of yourself that you're showing. 
Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, no one's really seen what I can do yet. You know, the promise is there, you know, everyone can see that the ability is there. Um, you know, it's, it's probably about time that I started to show it. See, the other thing <coughs> that perplexes me is, and, and, and I, 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 if whatever you, you can say what you can say and what you can't say, don't say, obviously. But uh, Dennis Hobson, I've got to go and talk about that because he is, I mean, from what I've seen, I think he's, I would have said he's one of the best promoters we've got in the country in terms of what he's done with the fights yeah. he's had. Clinton Words, Jamie McDonald, Stewie Hall. And he's got these guys getting legit world titles, yeah. not just, you know, fringe world titles, world title shots, sometimes at home. I mean, so for you, I mean, surely, I mean, to be sort of like around that mix, you know, wasn't that something that you wanted or, or 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 something you'd miss or yeah with, with dennis you know uh, looking back on it now you know i can see um you know uh you know maybe uh you know maybe it was a wrong decision to make or or you know that the little falling out with that we had you know looking back at it now um a year and a half down the line you know it, it shouldn't have happened it was pretty foolish and you know we've you know i've apologized we've apologized and we've made friends since um you know, you never say never in boxing. You know, we, you know, we may work work together again, hopefully one day down the line. You know, and yeah. yeah. But uh, like everything that's led up to this, to the right now, this moment in time, you know, I'm completely happy with. Um, and it's just about moving on from here, really. You know, it's like I say, I've only had eight professional fights, but you know, in boxing today, it, this this is 2015, and and um, you know, boxing, you know, heavyweight boxing in Britain, it's wide open, so. You know, I'm in a good a position as, as anyone um, to to do anything. You know, because there's 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 not a lot out there. The English title is that next in line? I think I think the Central Area title is next in line. Central Area. Um, and the English and and the British is what I've always wanted to win. So, you know that that is. And then if you win that, then 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 you know then then from there onwards that's. So the doors yeah. begin to really open. But, you know, the British title is what is is what I'm really is is the aim. And how long do you think it'll take you to get from area to British in your mindset? Um, two fights. Because I think the two I fights. Think the levels. Every, I think you know, like I said, Joshua and Fury and the other names apart. You know, yeah. there's not a massive gap between area and British level. Either all of them fighters are either they're all British level or they're all area level. You know they're all around the same level. So right. We're either all British area, British title level, or we're all area level. You know the best of us is probably really a British level, and the rest of us are probably area level. So it's going to be interesting. Okay, you know, lot of there are a lot of fighters have had cult followings. You got Ricky Hatton, you know. Uh, singing in a, a, a Hatton Wonder, Wonder World or something like that, and, and and you know, you had Naz doing what he did, and will Dave Allen have? Because obviously you're the, the White Rhino. Will you have some, or are you going to turn yourself into Mr. Untouchable? I'm just going to keep winning. Foremost, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to keep winning first and foremost, and um... but a cult following, like a like. Obviously, if you're the white rhino, then would you not have like white rhino t-shirts or you know some sort of thing that people can see? De Jason Cavan's got woo. So yeah, it's it's like like I think I think last night in Doncaster, you know, was the start of hopefully that happening. Fighting yeah in Newcastle Arena and all around the country in arenas was great, but it didn't allow me to to build a following um, where I'm right. from. So old friends and, and people have, have not been able to come and watch me and support me and, and, and get involved in it. But now we're back in Doncaster, you know, I'm really hoping that everyone's going to get behind me and, you know, and, and support me. And, and, and I want to give them some great nights in Doncaster and beyond. Absolutely. When you look out from where you are and you see stuff, whether it be on YouTube or Facebook or on social media, what goes through your mind? Most of the time. When, I'm, As a when I'm reading stuff on there. Yeah. Well, if it's negative, you know, I can't really I can't really say what I'm thinking right now. You know, it's, um, I see a lot of negative things as well. You know, a lot of people like to give me some sticks, especially on YouTube. Um, 
But don't you think that's love they have for you in disguise? Well, if, if they're listening to me, then that's their problem. You know, they're listening to me. So, um, that's fine. You know, it's, it's cool. If, if they're listening, then I'm grateful for them listening to me. So, uh, you know, it's always nice to see a nice comment as well. You know, I had a lot of, um, you know, there was too many congratulate, congratulatory messages to, to reply to, and that's nice, you know, um, it's really nice. So, yeah, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm, it's very, I'm very grateful for uh, for uh, anyone's support. Well, Dave, we support you as you know we support you. I support yeah. you um, without a shadow of a doubt. Probably your, 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 your biggest fan. Yeah. And um, I'm just looking forward to you fighting for the area title, getting that round your waist, picking up. You know the English title, picking up the British title. I look forward to seeing those fights. Yeah, for definite. I'm, I'm always going to be in good fights as well. So, um, you know, it's uh, you know I'm not in no rush, but um, I just want to fight again. You know, I'm just I'm just waiting now for this for this date to be definitely confirmed, 100. percent And uh, and uh, it's just exciting times. You know, that's all I can say. Dave Allen, thank you so much for talking to Baylor. Thank TV. you very much, Ingram. Thank you.